the wires. Exactly. Where's the generator? You saw it last week. That must be 10 miles from here. 15. Canadian research team has come up with DCA. They believe it's a cheap and simple drug that kills almost all cancers. You heard that right. A cheap and expensive powder that costs just pennies a dose. The drug called DCA, in short, has been used for decades in humans with some rare inherited diseases. When he added it to the water of mice and rats given human cancers, the results surprised him. He has this uh, big tumor growing in, in his back. So you can see that even after three weeks, there is a significant or 70% decrease in tumor size. It shrunk brain, breast, and lung tumors in the animals in a matter of weeks. And the drug had no side effects, confirmed by tests of DCA in humans for other diseases. The real story is, you can't have it. Not because it's unsafe, but because your blood's going to shoot out of your eyes because it doesn't make any money. DCA isn't owned by any pharmaceutical company. There's no patent on it. So on one hand, it could become a very inexpensive new treatment for cancer. On the other, drug companies won't be interested in funding studies for a drug that won't make them a profit. So-called empty space isn't really empty at all. It's actually full of energy. And this energy is basically electromagnetic in nature. And uh, <clears throat> the energy density is uh, quite high. In fact, it's so high that when it was first discovered mathematically, it was thought to be some kind of artifact of the mathematics. But then as time went on, there were even Nobel Prize winning experiments that showed that this energy in so-called empty space was really there. And that zero point energy field, as it turns out, is embedded everywhere in space, not outer space, here in this room. So that every cubic centimeter of space in this room, for example, uh, has enough power to run at least the United States for a day, a cubic centimeter. So it's an enormous field of energy. The grand uh, outcome would be that if you could use it to power everything from electric toothbrushes to aircraft carriers to automobiles to homes to, to space flight. Uh, Pulling energy from the quantum vacuum or the zero point energy field. You don't need utilities. You don't need ExxonMobil. <laughs> you don't need BP. You do not need coal. So there goes all of Australia's coal exports to China unnecessary, don't need it. On and on and on and on it goes. Is there a technical challenge? Yes. But the geopolitical macroeconomic policy issue is the big problem. And it isn't just because there are a few bankers and kleptocrats that are misanthropic sociopaths, although some of them are. Um, it's because there are a lot of stakeholders who don't want to have to deal with the change. Black shelving means a corporate interest will buy up a technology because it is a threat to other horizontally and vertically integrated parts of their corporate structure and just put it on a black shelf, keep it there. For example, here's a mistake many people have made. They come up with one of these systems, maybe it's a prototype that's only putting out 100 watts of quote free energy that's coming from the vacuum. 10 watts going in and 100 watts coming out. I know many people, there's a man at, at Lawrence Berkeley Labs who had done this. And they get approached by someone who says, oh, well work with me and we're a VC group and here's $50 million for a startup. Those folks are either shilling, they're fronting for the intelligence community, or they're sincere, but then someone comes in later with $5 billion and buys them out. J.P. Morgan famously was reported to have said to Nikola Tesla, 
when he had a car that had a little antenna on it that was running around where the batteries were charging it themselves. J.P. Morgan said, if we can't put a meter on it, we don't want it. 